everyone, it's Chloe here and I'm the owner, maker and creator of ME Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so today's video is all about photography and a lot of you have messaged me on Instagram or even just commented um, asking for any advice about photography and photo editing. So this video is purely about that. So I'll, I'll go through the process of um, how I take my photos and then how I edit my photos uh, but essentially just a little background in my photography days or my skills in photography um, so as you all know I studied architecture and in uni there was an elective to study photography and I from memory I did that elective um, and I also did some traveling courses and I remember one professor saw my photographs and asked me to um, take photos for them for events so I did take photos um, event photo photos um, for the University of Technology and also with the place that I worked at I also took photos of architecture and buildings and they've also used my photos in their submissions and also I think one of my photographs is in one of their books um, Maybe I can find that book. Okay, never mind. Couldn't find the book. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically I've, I have some experience taking photographs. Um, and outside of taking photographs for events and of architecture, I also did a lot of landscape photography just for fun with my husband. Um, so I'll show you um, what those photos are on this side um, but yeah and ever since I started my business I've been taking photos of my own products and my own toys and also of my process as well so so yeah that's just a little I guess um, insight on um, my experience I guess and I wouldn't say I'm a professional photographer I still see myself as an amateur um, but I just you know I learn as I go and so yeah, but anyways, I will go through um, how I take photos with my camera, but also how I take photos with my phone. And then I will also show you how I edit my photos in the Lightroom app. Um, I usually um, edit all my photos through my phone only because Instagram is, you know, best used on your phone rather than on your desktop and it just skips one mode of transferring from computer to the phone. I know some people do um, Photoshop or like edit their photos on their desktop and they transfer it onto their phone and then they post it But I just prefer to do everything on my phone because everything is on my phone um, And also with my camera my digital camera. Um, it has Wi-Fi on it so I can transfer all my photos um, via Wi-Fi and Which makes the process a lot smoother and a lot easier for me um, But anyways, I'm going to first show you the equipment that I use when I take photos um, And then I will take some photos and demonstrate um, how I do them and And yeah, so we'll get started from there. So let's get started Okay, so I actually don't really use a lot of equipment when I take my photos the main equipment that I use is usually my camera which I'm filming with right now or I use my phone to take my photos um, and I'll try and show both um, when I take photos with my phone and my camera and I guess you can see the difference um, and the other thing is that I use obviously I think you've seen with my Instagram I do use a white cloth as a background um, and I usually take photos on my couch because that's actually where a lot of the good lighting is and I guess that's rule number one really is to find a location where you have really good lighting um, and by really good lighting it's just really good indirect light um, you don't want to have direct light hitting anything or any part of the room or the surface or the space that you're taking photos in because that can really affect the the images and also when it comes to editing it will be really hard to edit as well unless you go into Photoshop and Photoshop is not an easy tool to use either and not many people know how to use Photoshop um, I usually try to avoid Photoshop only unless I have to you know remove something and I can just Photoshop it out or something but um, when it comes to lighting always go for indirect lighting because it is a softer light um, and also the other equipment that I use is a reflector so I just use a simple white piece of foam core that I just you know got 
out of the trash really <laughs> but you can really purchase this in your craft store and what the reflector does is that so I'll use myself as an example so right now I have light hitting this side of my face and but then this side of my face is a little bit shaded I'm looking at my monitor right now because I can't really I don't know where everything is but anyways so the light is hitting this side of my face but this side of my face is shaded but once I put the reflector over here you can see where am I putting in the right one yeah no that's right you can see that the this side of my face is less shaded so basically what the reflector does is that it bounces light the light source onto this surface and it bounces it onto the other side of your object and that way it can reduce the shadowing of your object because whenever you take photos there is always a chance that one side looks darker than the other and it can really affect the quality of that image so I always use a reflector just to reflect that light just so that I can reduce the shading on one side of the of the item usually it won't re it will reduce it enough but it won't remove the full shadowing unless you have a really good reflector something that's almost like aluminium foil or something um, but I prefer to use a white piece of um, foam core or you can use a white piece of cardboard to act as a reflector my piece is not that big only because the items that I take photos of are actually fairly small so I don't need that much area to reflect um, but you can buy really large like a1 sheets of um, foam core and you can see Set that up um, um, for your photographing station I know some people make a light box and what a light box is is essentially is a box that is just all surfaces are white and that way you get no shadowing on your photos but I feel like that takes away from the depth of um, some of the items as well like I feel like some shadowing really helps with the photos um, so yeah always have a reflector I've used this ever since um, I started my business so this thing has been going strong for almost two years but yeah always have a reflector that is um, really helpful in um, uh, reducing the shading of your or shadowing of your images or of your um, objects when you're taking photos of them so I guess that is tip number two always have a reflector um, so today we're going to be taking photos of this little guy oh don't know yep oh it focus awesome so here's a new creation for the Lunar New Year I know Christmas is hasn't even started yet but the Lunar New Year is next year um, on the in January I think end of January so I thought I'd just get ahead and start designing some Lunar New Year um, designs so this little guy his hat comes off it's very cute um, but yeah we'll be taking photos of this little guy today and um, I will show you photos that I take from my camera and also from my phone just to show you a little bit of difference um, but yeah so yeah we're going I'm going to set up the couch now get my cloth on get a stand on this because this guy can't stand on its own um, and then I will start taking photos with my phone first just to show you kind of what techniques I use and hopefully I'm able to you know show it in a way that um, makes sense to you guys but yeah so I'm going to move my reflector my camera and my item over to the couch I'm going to get that space set up and we'll get started from there okay so I've just put my cloth onto the couch I brought my reflector over and I've just propped my little toy onto the cloth as well so I'm actually going to um, I guess record my phone as I'm taking photos I think I can do that let's see okay so I've got my phone propped here I've just got cushions supporting it and then here I've just got my um, toy and I've got the cloth um, set up on the couch so right now it's summer in Sydney so the Sun doesn't really come in um, to my living room because the Sun is a lot higher right now but during winter the Sun does come in and I usually have to find the right time to take photos but oops um, but during summer it is um, 
okay because there is no direct light and it's all indirect lighting so I just got my reflector propped up here and if I remove it you can see how the shadows just come in and the right side of my toy is a little bit darker which I don't really like so I've just put my reflector back in and that's looking a lot better in terms of the light and the shade um, so yes yeah, so I've just taken the cap off my toy whoops um, it's taken off the cap and I'm going to take some photos of it so I like to keep my photos quite simple and if you've no if you can see here I have a grid on as well it's a three by three grid and I always use a grid when I take photos because it helps with um, just the ratios and the proportioning of my images and usually I do take with um, uh, it also helps me to center my photos when I'm taking photos um, but also if I want to be you know a little bit creative it, I can take photos like this and usually the whoops usually the rule is in terms of the ratio is that it's oh hubby's messaging me um, anyways the rule here is that you should always try and take photos uh, within a 1 to 3 or a 2 to 3 ratio. I think that's the right thing. So what I'm trying to say is if you want to take photos that are, and I guess in a way, proportional to the space, then I always try and take photos within a 2. Oops. I don't know. I'm pointing on my phone, but you can't really see what I'm pointing at. But basically what I'm doing here is my, in, my toy is within 2 by 2 squares and then everything else is blank and that is a good ratio because that will also allow me to add text in the future when I want to you know let's say I want to say happy new year or something I can put that text around it and there is a bit of a balance but usually with my photography for you know patterns I always just center my my items and you can see the hat just draws down here but that's completely fine it doesn't cause an imbalance to this image so I always take photo with the grid on so that's another tip as well I'm just gonna put the hat back on this little guy okay and just take a few more photos but yeah, I try to take as many photos as I can. Um, so with my phone, I use a um, Android phone. But I know with the Apple, my husband has an Apple. But there's a there's a few more functions. I know with the with this one, with this phone at least, I can take photos as a pro. But it's just easy on the camera, so I don't do it. Um, I usually just take photos as usual and as normal. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to really just quickly show you how I take photos on the camera as well. Okay, so I've just swapped um, my phone and my camera around. So right now my phone is filming. Um, but so right now I'm using the Sony Alpha. Oh, I don't think you can see that. Oh, okay. There we go. I am using the Sony Alpha 7 R2 camera, which is actually a really good mirrorless camera. Um, and same as with my phone, I've got my grid turned on right now. And that is going to help me um, with my, um, you know, I guess positioning of my photos um, so right now I'm going to try and get my camera closer okay so I've just changed the positioning of my um, phone so that you can hopefully can see what I'm doing but I always take photos by viewing in the viewfinder only because I find it much easier but um, so if you can see here this is one of the angles that I really like you can see that I have a better um, blurring of the background here so I don't know if you can see here on my screen so the f point which is the focus it's 2.8 so that is the aperture and aperture means the blurring of how much blurring you get in the background so I like it to be at the 2.8 but if I just show you what that is when I increase it so I'm increasing the aperture now so the f.2 let's say 14 and you can just see how that blurring of the background has uh, is not there anymore so basically the higher the focal point so the higher the f point 
which is let's say here 14, the less blurring of the background. Whereas the lower it is, the more blurring you get. So there you go. You can see that difference here. So I like taking my photos with a 2.8 F point and everything. So I try and keep it everything simple. I do my ISO as an auto. I keep my shutter speed at a fairly stable speed. And, um, and yeah, and it's purely just point and shoot now, really. Um, so I'm just going to take this photo and I'm going to make sure to focus on the toy. My hands are shaking a little bit. So I'm in a really awkward position right now. There we go. And that is, I'll just show you what it looks like. Oh, it's not focusing. There we go. And that is what that photo looks like. So I think you can see from the difference between my phone and my camera, the photo already looks so much better. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a few more with my camera because I prefer it on my camera. And later I will show you the editing of both the camera photos and the phone photos as well. So I've just taken the photos and I'll just show you really quickly what they look like on the camera. Oops. There we go, that's better. Okay, really cute. So now I'm just going to transfer those photos onto my phone and unfortunately I need to use both my phone and my camera so I won't be able to record that but I will quickly do that right now okay so I've just transferred the photos onto my phone I'll record my screen on my phone as well while I'm talking to you guys um, so let's just do that first okay so I'm recording on my phone right now so I'm just going to open my Lightroom app so it is the you can download this app for free um, in your Play Store or in your Apple Store. Um, there is a premium version of this, so when I go into this, you'll and when I start editing, you'll see it. Um, so you can see some of the photos I've taken already. Um, so I'm just going to transfer those photos that I took on my phone and on my camera. So just not to confuse you guys, I'm just going to transfer one photo from my camera and then one photo from my phone okay so that's done so you can see my process photos here um but yeah you can see that so the photos um on here already have been edited except for the two new ones that i've just brought into um the phone so i'm going to edit my the the phone photo first um oh there's really loud music i'm just going to close the door Okay, I'm back. Um, anyways, so I've just got um, the camera photo that I took from, no, not the camera, the phone photo that I took on my screen right now. So I'm just going to go through the different functionalities um, of this app. So the first one I'll show you is the crop functionality. So because this is going to be posted on Instagram, and usually when I... Um, edit my photos I always convert it to a square format um, because even in my patterns they are placed in a circle so a square format just makes sense and also um, yeah Instagram is square so I always edit as a square format first and when I do this you can see that a grid pops up as well and that also helps me to um, center my object in my photo so I'm just going to crop this a little bit just like that just move it a little bit if I can Let's see I think that's quite good yep quite happy with that also with this you can also rotate you can rotate your um, image if you feel like your image isn't straight enough then you can rotate it a bit so I just rotated it a little bit and there's a tick on the top right hand corner so when you tick that it means it's accepted that change the next thing, so the 
the functions that has a blue style star on them that is for the premium users so if I click on that I can't use that functionality unless I pay you know $75 or $75.99 per year obviously there's a seven day free trial um, but I never really needed to use these kind of functions at all so I've never purchased the premium version of this app I've always just used the free version and it's been enough for me um, so I've just cropped this and what I the other the next thing I always do is the light so you can see that there's an auto here so you can also do the autofocus but I don't like how the autofocus looks so really there's no difference at all so I like to edit mine on my own so I always go to the light setting so the light is really important because this can change the exposure settings the contrast the highlights the shadows the whites and the blacks and I'll go through each one of those for you so exposure is self-explanatory it's really just the how bright the whole image is and I usually like to make it a, a little bit brighter but then when you, if you see how bright it gets, it does kind of just, the image will start to disappear and you don't want that. So you need to just play around with this light setting. I always just do a little bit to how I like it. Um, and obviously I will always go back and forth, back and forth, because as I make the other changes, I will want to change other things as well. Contrast is like how... I guess how contrasted your image would be so right now if I bring it back down it makes it more dull and as I increase it it makes it really contrasted and that is probably too much for me um, but when it's at this setting the redness doesn't really pop out so I really want to bring up that contrast a little bit so to me I like that a lot more highlight is actually the the highlight is actually like how much highlight or how much brightness you can so you can see in the, this image there are moments where there is really bright patches and that's what the highlight actually does it either brings those patches down or you can bring those patches up I always like to bring my highlight a little bit more because I just want the background to be a little bit more glowy I guess so I'll just bring the highlight up quite a little bit Shadows, and I've said before, I used my reflector to help me reduce the shadowing. Um, but if I want to reduce those shadows even more, I can just drag this across up like this. So you can see how that's reduced it as well. Um, but I don't want to reduce it too much. And if you bring it back this way, it increases the shadows, but it also makes the object darker. So I'm just going to bring it up just a tad little bit because I just want the image to be really nice and bright. Because um, that's, I think that's my style. I like my images to be bright and I just want the colors to pop out as well. And then the whites are focusing on the white areas. So if I increase this, you can see the whites really does blow out a little bit. And when I bring this down, it just dulls those white areas a little bit, which I don't want. Like I said, I like my image to be a little bit bright. So I'll just bring the brightness, the whiteness up a little bit. And then the last bit is the black. So anything that is black or dark in this photo will be toned down as well. So I don't really play with this too much unless I have a really dark shadow. So I'm just going to keep it really subtle, really minimal. So that's what I do in the light. So that's one of the functions that I use a lot. And you can see how much the photo has, has already changed. Like I'll show you what it looked like before. If I just hold it down, it looked pretty dull and then when I let go it looks so much brighter and I like that a lot more but there are other things that I also still want to edit which is the color so the color there are four aspects to it so there's the temperature the tint the vibrance and the saturation so temperature is really just how warm do you want the photo and how cool you want the photo so if I want the photo cooler I will drag it towards the blue so you can see how that really changed to a bluey tint and then if I want it warmer it becomes more yellowy more sapia like I guess I think if you're going for that really old school like yeah really old school look then you would probably bring it down to that yellowy warmer color but I feel like I don't really need to change the color of this too much so I'm just going to keep it just there at three minus three I'll probably 
bring it to two. Just very subtle because I do want my photo to be warm, but I still want it to keep it bright, and I don't want the yellow, the warmness to take over the image. The next thing is the tint. So tint is when you want to apply a color overlay on it, and in this case, I do not want to do that, so I'm not going to touch it at all because I don't want to do that at all. Um, the next one is the vibrance. So vibrance, as it says, it's just how vibrant your image is going to be. Um, so if I bring it up this way, those those really bright colors will start to pop. If you want to dull it a little bit, it will literally bring the colors down. But it doesn't turn into a black and white image. So I don't want to dull it. I want to bring up the vibrance just a little bit. And honestly, just a little bit of, like, just a slight change can make a big difference in your image. So you don't want to go overboard with that. You want to keep it subtle. Um, the other one is saturation. And that, as it says, is the lower the saturation, it will literally turn into a black and white image. And when you higher um, increase the saturation, it literally, similar to vibrance, it will bring up the saturation of those colors. So I'm just going to keep it... Um, Back to zero if I can. Can I get it to zero? No. No, 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 it's not letting me. Anyways, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, so this is already looking pretty good already. But in this app, you can also do um, effects as well. So you can add textures, clarity, um, vignetting. But I don't really do any of these things because I don't feel like I need it. Um, so I'm going to skip that. And if you can see on my phone here, whichever um, element that you've adjusted, there will be a dot under those elements just to tell you what you have adjusted, uh, which is really useful and really good to know. So the next one is the details. And I usually try and just bring up the sharpening a little bit just to enhance the details a little bit more. So if I bring it really high, you can see how that image just really sharpens itself up. If I put it back down, it, it's not as sharp. So I always just bring the, the sharpness a little bit high. I don't want to bring it too high because you start to lose the blurriness in the background. Not that this phone photo has um, that much blurring in the background, but I just bring the details up a little bit. Optics, I don't use this at all um, because it's not really required. And that is it. That is literally all I do when I edit my photos, which is really quick and really easy. So if I was to just show you what it looked like previously, I just hold it down. So that is what it looks like previously, and this is what it looks like now. And I'm really, really, really happy with this edit. So when you go up to the three dots on the top right hand corner, you will see that you can actually copy these settings. So this is actually one of the things. It's, um, in terms of the difference between the premium version and the free version. When you copy settings in the free version, you can only uh, paste the settings um, for one image at a time. Whereas with the premium version, you can actually paste those settings across multiple pictures at a time, which can save you a lot more, a lot of time when you're editing. Um, so I'm just going to copy these settings so yes, I didn't copy the crop because I like to crop my images on its own. There's no masking, no healing because I didn't pay uh, for the premium version. So none of those are copied across, but everything else has been copied. So I just tick and then I just go back to the main page and then I click onto my camera photo. So my, this is what my camera photo looks like and you can already see the difference. And the difference is that blurring in the background um, and also the Christmas, Chris not Christmas, crispness of the the photo itself or, or of the object that I'm focused on. So I'm going to be lazy and it's not really being lazy, it's just being quick and efficient. I'm going to paste those settings in, but you need to keep in mind, even though um, you are pasting the same settings, the image itself has been taken with two different um, cameras and also the lighting Change, has changed as well because you know the sun changes there could be a cloud that blocked the sun at the time when I took this photo or when I took the other photo so even though I'm pasting um, the settings from my previous photo into this photo I still need to make minor adjustments so I'm just going to paste those settings so it actually looks okay it's not too bad I am going to quickly crop it as a square 
and that is looking really good so this is what I'm talking about when I look at this image I can see that the contrast looks like it's too high so I'm going to try and go and bring that contrast down I'm just going to adjust this a little bit so I'm just going to the lighting bit and just bring that contrast down a little bit because it was just too much and the reason for that is that my digital camera which I'm using right now um, has also some editing functions on it and I've I think I've got a preset on that already. So the contrast on the camera is actually really good already. So I'm just going to bring the contrast down for this one. And then everything else looks really good. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, and then, yeah, that's, I think that's it. So now that that's done, I think everything else looks good as well. I don't feel like I need to change anything. Um, oh, another thing is that if you're dealing with color and you want to change the color of something, this is really cool. So you can go to the mix and you can actually select the color type. And if you're unsure, you can use this button here and select the color and it will tell you what percentage of that color is. So right now I'm going for the red. So it just told me that it is red. So I'm just going to go back. Oops. I want I'm just gonna go back to the color go to the mix and I know I want to just fix the coloring and here you can see that it's adjusted the saturation so and uh, which I actually like so I'm gonna keep that up but yeah you can literally just adjust the color that you're working with and everything else can stay the same so you can see here I've adjusted the red and it's turned purple but everything else has remained the same so that is a really cool tool to use, especially if, for example, you have, you know, you want to work with different colored yarns, but you're not sure what color to work with, then this is a really cool tool to just show what your toy can look like in a different color. But I don't really do that and I don't feel like I need it. So I don't use that function at all. But I just thought it was something really cool to show you because sometimes I do adjust, you know, the brightness and the color of certain colors if I feel like it's not working to my liking so like for example the face the face is looking a bit dull and it's like mostly orange so if I just go out of here and I go into the orange I can probably adjust that a little bit but you know it, there's other oranges around so I don't think I can adjust that too much um, but yeah, anyways, that is also another really cool tool for um, that you can use on the Lightroom app. Um, so if you're going to use the desktop version, which is not free, unfortunately, unless you want to try the trial version, um, but it also has really similar editing functions, just more advanced, um, which is the reason why I just use the phone function because it's really quick and really easy. And when I go back, so this is what all my photos look like. You can see that the um, uh, the the camera version it's a bit cooler in color, whereas the camera version is a bit warmer. So I think I might just change the warmth of the uh, change the temperature of this image a little bit. So I'm just going to increase that warmthness because I like how it's warm and that that's looking so much better. And there we go. So if I was to show you what the before and after looks like, it will be like, so that's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like after so much better. And basically what I'll do is I will save these images. So on this app, you have a minimum of 15 images that you can export at a time. Again, if you get the premium version, you can export ex as many images as you want. But because I don't have the premium, I can only export, you know, 15 at a time. But in this case, I'm just going to export the two images and I can save it to device or I can share it to my, um, to my drives, for example. So I always share it to my drives and I save it into my OneDrive, which is where I run my whole business, really. I'm not going to show you because, you know, I, it's quite messy in there. But yeah, you can save it um, or you can share it to your device, um, which I'll actually do. I'll save this to my device. And then that's it. I've just finished taking photos and editing my photos for this new toy that I am going to 
um, release the pattern for very soon. So I think that is all I have to say really, but I guess just to summarize in terms of photo taking, I guess, like I said before, rule number one is find a location that has really good indirect light. Number two, always have a reflector with you because you want to make sure that your photo is balanced in terms of light and shade. Um, the next thing is um, take as many photos as you can with your camera or your phone. If you don't have a digital camera, your phone can just do just as well as I just shown before. You probably won't get, you know, the quality of the camera in terms of the blurring of the background or the crispness. Crisps? I keep saying crispness crispness of the, the image um but honestly the phone can really do a great job um and also with your phone you probably don't have much memory either so what i always do is i always back up automatically back up my photos to my onedrive which has unlimited storage um i'm sure on iphone you have your cloud system so always save your photos and if you need it again then you can just go back and download it back on your phone after you've backed it up um but yeah, always save your images because there's been cases where I've accidentally deleted something and I wasn't supposed to delete it and it's just lost forever and I can't retrieve it again. So I always made my phone to just um, back up all my images, even if it's the raw unedited image, because at least if I did accidentally delete my edited images, then I can just refer back to my raw images to um, edit them again. The other, the next thing is definitely use Lightroom. Lightroom is a really good app. I know there are other apps out there for photo editing, but my preference is definitely Lightroom. I used to use Visco, but then after a while, the app just, just didn't work for me anymore. I just felt like it was really slow and it kept malfunctioning. I don't know if it's because of my phone, but ever since then, I've always just used Lightroom and I've been using Lightroom ever since. So, and it is free. So, if you don't have it yet, definitely download the Lightroom app onto your phone and just have a play around. And the other thing is practice. Just practice, practice, practice. Um, I, like honestly, I didn't get to this level with just sitting around watching videos and just thinking I can't do it. it I took, you know, I had one elective class in uni, but after that, for the next, you know, 10 years, I've been practicing with my photography, taking photos of people, landscapes, toys, and just practicing my editing skills as well. And over time, you'll find the style that you like, and you can apply that to all your images so that you can keep it consistent um, for your feed on Instagram. And that's another thing. Make sure that your photos are consistent in terms of your editing as well. Um, because if you're watching this with regards to your Instagram feed, Usually people are drawn to accounts that are consistent um, in terms of the style of their photography. So, which is the reason why the copy and paste function of your editing is really, really important and really great. Um, and definitely use that, um, that, that option in the Lightroom app. Um, but yeah, I really hope this video has been informative. I can't really think of anything else, but I really hope that um, on the editing side, I've explained the things that I use to the best of my ability and that hopefully you can apply that to your pho photography as well. But yeah, I really hope this video is uh, has been informative and has hopefully helped you to um, push your photography photography to the next level. Um, but I guess in the photo, photo editing side of things. Um, but also through this video, it just goes to show you don't need to be a professional photographer to take nice photos. It's really just the editing side of things. Um, so, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this video or about photography or about editing, definitely leave a comment below. Um, but otherwise, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you've been liking the content so far, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And um, Hope you guys will have a really great day and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.